Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the countdown? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Blue la la, y'all. What's good? It's your girl, Asia Blue. Not only are we here with Hollow R 600 Seconds, but we got somebody very funny, very special. The king himself, T-Link. Y'all give it up. Yeah, What's good? good. T-Link, um, tell us where you're from. I'm originally from Somerville, South Carolina, right okay. outside of Charleston, South Carolina. Okay, and so how was it growing up in Somerville? It's crazy because it's a, a very mixed community. Uh, for the most part, it's a majority white community. But mm -hmm. where I live, it was all the, where all the black people stayed. Okay. So we lived in an area called Brownsville. Okay. And so, um, so yeah, basically you had to assimilate. You had to, um, I, I call myself biracial. Mm -hmm. You know, I had um, 7 to 3 in the morning, 7 mm -hmm. in the morning to 3 p.m. I was black. Mm -hmm. By 301, I was, uh, you know, you know, I had to assimilate, so. So with the brown people being in Brownsville, do you think that that's where you got your inspiration for your comedy? Yeah, I mean, you know, life experiences just in general. My mom was really funny. My mm -hmm. dad's really funny. Um, a lot of people in my family. So it was, it was always, always around. So what age were you when you decided, like, hey, I want to actually do this and pursue this for a living? Mm. Um, I would say actually last year. Wow. But I started a lot earlier. Um, I had a teacher that um, I would always disrupt class. <laughs> So I had this one teacher, she would always say, hey, look, if you can stay quiet throughout the class, um, i let you get five minutes at the end of the class to do whatever voice you want to do or do whatever joke you want to do. Wow. And so, yeah, that was about fifth grade, you know. Wow. And so, yeah, so I, you know, I, I'd wait at the end of class and then I got to do my stupid voices, Stevie Wonder impressions. Okay, so in the process of you doing this, you know, you being in fifth grade, you being so young and also, you know, I know it's kind of hard, like, not really growing up how everyone grew up when you talk about where you're from. How did that impact you? Um, you just got used to it, you know, um, growing up in that community, knowing that, like I said, you know, having to assimilate mm -hmm. to a white culture most of the day and then actually coming back to my people at the end of the day, um, it, it led me to go to a HBCU. Yes, I come on. I couldn't do it anymore. You Your know what I'm saying? Yes, I, yeah. sir. So I ended up going to South Carolina State University. But, okay. Um, you just got used to it and you learned how to play the game, do what you needed to do to survive and, you know, got through it. That's actually really interesting. Um, and so that leads me to ask, what are your goals? Like, what are you pursuing right now? Um, just greatness. I don't I don't know if Come there's a, a complete answer to that. Um, I don't know what it is until I've achieved it. Yes. And I don't know if I'll ever in my mind actually achieve it, you know, um, in that perspective. Mm -hmm. I, I leave that for others to, to judge. But, you know, I just want to be great. That's it. You don't want to be. You are. Uh, yeah. You are. Yeah. You are what you say you are. Actually, but, you know, I don't want to stop yeah. at where I am. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You got, more, you got great, more ways you know, to go. Yeah, you can put an ER on that. And that yeah, I love that. that. Yeah. I love that. Um, before our interview started, you guys, um, we were kind of talking, you know, just a prep, you know, just a prep conversation. And T-Leak was letting me know, like, um, that we both attended... Um, this protest that happened during the summertime, a part of the Black Lives Matter movement. He was just, you know, telling me some of his opinions on it. So could you kind of share that with us? Yeah, I just I let her know that um, I heard her speak. I was literally right in front of her as she was talking. And I, I thought that that was dope what she said. Um, being, you know, on that platform at that time, um, for that specific reason, I thought it was super dope how you, yeah. you expressed yourself and um, the love that you had for your community. I, I awesome. appreciate that. Um, I want to kind of hear about your love for the community. Um, if you have, let's say a young black man was li was listening to you right now, like what advice would you give him, especially in today's society? Don't let society pinpoint who you are. Wow. Uh, like you, you make yourself into what you think you need to be. Um, you know, like I said, I come from an area where, you know, my, my father was a police officer, mm -hmm. my mother worked with, um, you know, people that were um, challenged. Yeah. Um, and so I came from a, a, a household where everybody helped somebody. And so I don't think, I've, I've only had maybe one job where I have not helped somebody. Mm -hmm. And that was working at Walmart, but you can actually make, you know, make yeah, the argument that I was still, still serving, serving in that capacity. I was just slinging um, CDs at the time. 
Um, but, you know, I, I came from that environment, and so I, I think that it's, it's good to give back because when you you make your life about service, you know, I think it, um, it all, that, that energy comes back to you. It does, you know, um, not knowing your religious, you know, beliefs, but even if you just pay attention to what's going on in the world and just how the world works, when you give to others, others give back to you. You know, um, pour yourself out and people will pour in. So that's so beautiful. That's really beautiful. Um, and so when we talk about you being a comedian, and I also see that you're a singer, songwriter mm -hmm. as well. Okay, why do you do that? Like, I have no idea. I, I mean, those are just things that I've always wanted to do as a kid. Like, my mom used to make me um, sing and dance before I went to bed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was another thing that I ended up doing as I was young. Like, she made me sing and dance to Lionel Richie all night long. I don't know why she picked okay. that song. But before I went to bed, <laughs> almost every night, I had to get up and do a dance for her. And then, you know, it graduated to Michael Jackson and all of that stuff. Um, and so, in my mind, as a kid, I always wanted to be an entertainer. That was a way that I got away from mm. everything else that was going on in my household, everything else that was going on in my community. I'd be the kid that'd be walking down the street singing and dancing to myself, and people probably thought I was crazy, but, you know, that's what it I was It was your doing. escape. It was just my way to I escape. I love that. So, I love um, that. You know, just kind of funneled into it. and. Basically, who I've been since I've been a kid. I love that, and so I just want to, you know, for anybody that's watching, what makes you different as um, an entertainer? I, I just consider myself an entertainer. I just try to incorporate everything that I've learned through the years, and um, you know, and use that to um, create my own identity. I don't try to um, follow anyone, um, but if I had to pinpoint somebody that. Um, I look up to, as, as far as being an entertainer, would be someone like Jamie Foxx, somebody mm, that okay. that has that total well package and well-rounded, and it's not, you, you can't look at him as just a singer, you can't look at him as just an actor, you can't look at him as just a comedian, Jamie you can't, Fox. yeah, he's a songwriter, I mean, he's, 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 he's a collection of a bunch of different things I love that. Um, that encapsulates, uh, you know, a, a great entertainer. I love that, so can you tell us about any current projects and upcoming projects? Well, um, I always got something going on, but... <laughs> Um, right now, um, just a, a bunch of my friends, we just kind of came together, created a, a group, um, we call ourselves Certified Comics, um, and really just a, a, an eclectic group of guys that are, um, you know, just trying to put on, making people smile, making people laugh. And so um, we're starting out, we, we opened up an um, a open mic that we have every Monday night at the Joint, uh, which is on Main Street. Um, so people can come out there and, and okay. get free laughs, man. You know, it's no, it's, it's no cover charge, um, and it's just something that's needed in the co comedy community. So. Okay, and y'all, that's at the joint. What time? It starts at eight o'clock. Okay, the joint eight o'clock on Main Street every every Monday. Every Monday. So if you're watching and you feel like you got something to give, y'all come bless that stage. I guess our last question for you would be is, where can these people find you at? I'm all over the place, man. Um, you can find me on Facebook. Um, I'm either under Comedian T. Link or you can find me on Travis T. Link. Um, Lincoln. Um, DJ T. Link. I DJ okay. as well. Um, iGeechee.com. I got a clothing line um, where I sell, you know, uh, paraphernalia that uh, basically highlights my uh, Geechee heritage. Mm, I love that. So, those are the places you can find me. Instagram, I'm uh, tlink27. Okay, and do you have any shout outs? I want to shout out everybody, man. Shout out. Hey, people come for coming on to out, the support people. me. My homeboys at the table, my fellow comedians, Shaggy, Soft <laughs> Scott Jokes, Michael Garrett, my homeboy Ness, my homeboy Dirty Motherfucking D. Hey, okay now. My shoe buddy over there. Um, but yeah, everybody out here, man, I appreciate the support. Okay, well y'all heard it here at High Low Art 600 Seconds. Let me tell y'all something about Mr. T-Link right here. Not only is his soul as nice as his skin, come on clear skin, ladies, <laughs> ladies, huh? But he's also a beautiful person and he has really, really, really good stuff. So y'all make sure y'all go hit up his social medias and y'all already know, support the black community, man. And again, shout out to High Low Art, y'all be blessed. Shout out to High Low Art, appreciate you having What's good, y'all? So we want to bring up somebody so talented. Y'all give it up for T. Link. How's everybody doing? What's going on? As she said, my name is T. Link. I come from Somerville, South Carolina. If you guys heard the interview, I'll tell you a little bit about Somerville, South Carolina. 
it's a very, very, very divided area. A lot of racism goes on there. Wow. Yeah, it's like half white on one side, black people on the other side. You know, I grew up in a household where we didn't we didn't deal with the racism. My mom and my dad taught us to love everybody for who they were. You know, but we had a whole lot of damn prejudices. Yes, sir. Yeah, we, you know, and I think if you, if you deal with your prejudices, you don't have to worry about being racist. You, you can just deal with what you don't like about certain people. Like, for instance, if I went in Walmart and I saw some Mexicans with, some, with, their, with their little kids dressed up in wedding dresses and cowboy boots, they don't freak me out. <laughs> You know, it's funny, like we had this kid that played basketball with me, he was Asian. You know, he never passed me the ball, and I'd be like, why the hell he never passed me the ball? But then I had to realize that his peripheral vision was messed up. It was messed up, man. Yeah, it was up, man. But it's just prejudices, man. I mean, to be honest with you, you, know, you, you come around the wrong area, like if a black person walk up to your door, your car, you gonna lock the door too. I mean, it's just, it, it is what it is. But part of being growing up in that area, man, we didn't have things like everybody else did. We lived on dirt roads. I'm, I'm, I'm that old. And we just had, we didn't even have a stop sign. We had this old dude that just jumped out in front of us and be like, ah, could you give a nigga a dollar? <laughs> you know, and the crazy thing about it is he was related to everybody. And he grew up on the same block. So he'd walk down the street every goddamn night looking through everybody's car anyway. So he'd know if you had money or not. So if you lied to him, and told him he did have a dollar, his ass would be like, I know you got a dollar because you got like 45 cents in your center console. Matter of fact, if you give me $2, I'll give you back your license and your registration. Like, what the hell? Now, why didn't you just take the damn money? If you got I gotta pay for my license, my registration. You know, and it's when we didn't have prostitutes where I grew up. We just had this one old lady that would tear a page out of Playboy magazine and give you a scoop of Vaseline and send you on your way. <laughs> and I'm not even going to tell you who it is and I'm not going to let y'all ridicule my grandmama like that. <laughs> Listen, my grandmama was an entrepreneur. I don't know what y'all talking about. Right? She was a woman that actually created WAP. She had niggas lined up every goddamn morning. And I ain't talking about the WAP y'all talking about. She served waffles and pancakes. She had a bed and breakfast. She had a bed and breakfast. You know, and the funny thing about it is my grandmother gave her life to God and I was a church musician, so I played the keyboard growing up. And I hated when she would sing songs because she always started talking about shit that she had no business telling people. It had nothing to do with church. You know how black people get when they sing church songs. She started telling people shit like, said my Jesus, he's a healer. Said he's stronger than tequila. Said he took me off. That reefer said he gave my man a big penis. I'm like, Grandma! <laughs> Grandma, stop that shit. <laughs> That's funny. Like, my dad was a cop growing up. My father was actually the first African American police officer in Somerville, South Carolina. Yeah. Big deal. Like, he literally got an award two years ago. Viola Davis actually presented him with an award. So it was a real big thing. But you think just because he was a police officer that I wouldn't get in any trouble. You know, but that, that wasn't right because my dumb ass went out and bought the most ghetto ass motherfucking car you can buy. I had me a goddamn LeBaron with the rooftop. I had goddamn 20 foils on that bitch. I had, listen, listen, I had the tinted windows. But my ass kept getting pulled over because my headlight didn't quite work right. Like one of them would go up and the other one would stay halfway down. Like I was riding around looking like Forrest Whitaker and shit. So the cops would always pull me over. And this one specific time the cops pulled me over, you know, and they had me outside the car and they were berating me and shit, had me on the ground and shit, and um, looking through my shit and I was pissed as fuck, man. You know, my dad came and my dad, my dad was like, leave me alone. And you know, I got away with that situation, but they still gave me a goddamn ticket. Cause I didn't have my fucking registration. And the reason I have my registration is because that goddamn crackhead that I told y'all about earlier that took my shit. Well, you know, growing up in that area, man, like I said, I learned to appreciate a whole lot of shit, but I was a church musician and that was the thing I loved the most. I wanted to be a singer when I grew up. I didn't really think about doing comedy too much. It was always funny, but I always wanted to be a singer. And it's conflicting because like, my, one of my favorite singers is R. Kelly. He was one of the, per the, the first people that you know, caused me to 
actually learn how to play the piano. You know, and he had this song out when I was a kid. It's called, Hey, Mr. DJ, why don't you slow this party down? The ladies in here are alive. Yeah, this one who's caught my eye. I had no idea this motherfucker was talking about some 12 graders, some 12 year old at the goddamn prom. That's some fucked up shit. I can't even listen to his music the same way anymore. Well, my favorite artist right now is John Legend. I have a love hate relationship with John Legend because that motherfucker is so talented. I always imagine him singing shit that he ain't got no business singing. Like, for instance, him singing to his kids. He go in his kid's room, and he sing them a lullaby, he sing, The itsy bitsy spy climbed up the water spy. You know, you gotta do that, oh, that's what you do. Down climbed the rock, on the watch the spy, out. Out came the sun. I'm the dry to pour the rain on. Cause you know you gotta do that on. The itty bitty spy climbed up the spout again. Again! Cause black people don't know when to stop singing. Again! The itty bitty spy climbed up the spout again. And then he take it to the bedroom, to his wife. And that's when it really gets dicey. And then he starts singing. I'm going to put all of me inside all of you. Every crack and every crevice have you screaming to the heavens. You put your mouth on me, I'll put my mouth on you. Your period's on, you're such a liar. Why y'all lie about that shit? You got me looking like a vampire. Now blood is all on me And my sperm is all on you You That's my time everybody, thank you guys